music is a part of history as well as our culture. However, there is what I call a great gulf between our music and popular music of today. Some of us do not like the type of music that our young people seem to be so crazy about. To me, it has no real deep meaning, but as a parent and trying not to be totally defined as old school, I do my best to keep up with this style of music. <clears throat> I've discovered that no matter the age, music tends to communicate or it describes how people feel. Whether they are angry, upset, distressed, feeling good, feeling lousy, or whatever the case. Music normally is about somebody's issues somebody's problem or someone's happiness. Now, I haven't forgotten my text. I'm, I'm just trying to take you somewhere. For when I consider what Paul says, I've been trying to get an understanding of that text since we attempted to deal with it on last Sabbath. God says, Jacob, I love. But Esau, I, I hate. And it is somewhat confusing to me. It may not be confusing to you, but it is somewhat confusing to me in the light of the fact that God makes a promise to Rebecca. And I have found out that when God makes a promise, he always delivers. Y'all going to talk to me? He promised to bless you if you were faithful to him with your tithes and offerings. And I'm a living witness that he has kept that promise. He promised to be a doctor in a sick room. And, and so many folk can, can attest to the fact that God touched them when the doctor would say there was no hope. Can y'all talk to me? He promised to be a lawyer in a courtroom and he kept that promise. He promised to supply all of my needs and he kept that promise. God is not slack concerning his promise. If he said it, it will come to pass. Is that right? However, 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 the, the promise which he gave Rebecca seems to take place over genetics. It appears as though the natural way of things are being overlooked by God. I said the natural way of looking at things seems to be overlooked by God. And, and, and I understand that God's ways is not our ways. I, I understand that his thoughts are not our thoughts, but but God denies the firstborn and says, I love Jacob, the second child born, and I hate Esau, the firstborn. So, so I'm really confused. Just like Paul, who knows and understands that God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. That God does not lie. Anybody in here know that God is a lie? God does not lie. Lie, And so Paul is trying to figure out whether or not God is joking with him. For in the back of Paul's mind and from his upbringing, his culture, Paul knows God has always dealt with the first of everything and anything. You think I'm lying? Well, down in Egypt's land, unless you had blood sprinkled on the doorposts of a lamb, that was found without spot or wrinkle, the Bible says your firstborn would die, including the animals, from the poorest all the way up to the king's palace. God has always dealt with the first of anything. He has told us to give him the first 
of our fruits. He said, make two tables of stone like unto the first. He said, bring a lamb of the first year. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. But seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and all these things uh, shall be added. Uh, the dead in Christ shall rise first. We love him because he first loved us. I am the first fruits of them that slept. God always deals with the firstborn. Am, am I too heavy for y'all this morning? But, but for some reason, God is taking priority over genetics or the way things normally go. Listen, and this is another thing that confused me. These twins have not been born. They are innocent. They are incapable of doing good or bad. They have not used their power of choice. They have not decided to do the right thing or the wrong thing. They cannot crawl, walk, or talk. Nine months have not passed. They are not teenagers who attempt to make choices. Yet God says, Jacob, I love Esau. I hate. I'm confused. What, what's up with this? How can a loving God have a dual personality? Y'all, y'all not did I'm gonna see, I'm gonna ask you this question again. How can a loving God have a dual personality? A different standard, a different issue. I hear John say, For God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Somewhere I read, uh, he said, greater love had no man than this, that I would lay down my life. Didn't I hear him say, I have loved you with an everlasting love, and that everlasting love is the isness of the very being of God. Ooh. Uh, that, that sounds kind of high there. I, I said that love of God is the very isness, the very existence of God. Uh, God was born whenever he came into existence uh, with the fact of love. So then, so then maybe, maybe God is just having a love problem like he did with Israel. It appears as though God is saying, if you don't know me by now. It appears as though God is saying, sunshine, blue skies, that I made. Please, y'all know it, don't you? Go away. <laughs> 